All right, this is the first video I've done in quite a while, and uh, I really wanted to start with something that I would just really enjoy drawing. So I wanted to draw like a crazy monstrous clown. Uh, I, I enjoy drawing darker characters, and uh, it's really where my heart is. I love drawing comics. I love drawing all the heroes and Superman and 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 beautiful women and just to every type of person there is, but my heart is always in drawing the darker, crazier characters. I don't know what that says about me, but just the way it is. And uh, actually, I think I really should start with something that's a bit more of a standard Loomis head. Uh, so I've got even divisions. This is a little high. This will be my division for a brow. This will be my division for my eyebrows, my nose, and my chin my jawline sketched in this would be about where I put my ear now this Loomis head is it's a little modified it's just what I've kind of been comfortable with over the years I, I've worked with uh, the Loomis head more recently because I find I end up having to adjust the proportions a little less than the How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way head that, that's uh, John Buscema who's a phenomenal artist and a phenomenal teacher and probably the greatest How to Draw Comics book I think that's ever been produced uh, and, and is really the, the foundation for everything that I know but the Loomis head just works a little better for me so this is this is a bit of a um, a version that I, I've kind of shorthanded over the years and so this is a head that really could be Superman or, or any character. And in order to make this really monstrous, I'm just going to start, start sketching in the features and the, the broader shapes of the face. And uh, you'll see how that kind of alters as I draw. Um, maybe it'd be a, a more economical for me to draw a base uh, facial shape that's more appropriate for the kind of character that I'm, I'm drawing. But I, I find just going with my standard shape and then adjusting as I go, it just works for me. And it's what I'm so used to, uh, just using a, a base shape and then making adjustments. So I want to give him a clown nose because drawing a crazy clown is something I, I don't think I've ever actually done professionally and I just thought it'd be a lot of fun. I actually uh, started, and I'll post them. Oh, I po I'll post it. It's one video I did of, of how to draw eyes. And I thought, you know, that'd be a great video. This is something that has a lot of appeal and maybe in a lot of people would get something out of it. And I think it was a terrible video. I just was so not feeling it. It wasn't fun for me to do. I didn't really feel like I had anything to say that was really useful that hasn't been said a million times before. And I was trying to keep it so broad that, uh, I don't think it was really all that informative. So I do want to do a how to draw eyes video at some point, and I will, but I want it to be much more uh, structural um, and foundational than what I was doing. So it's it's transferable to drawing eyes from all kinds of different angles and really understanding uh, what it is that makes uh, makes eyes look real and dimensional from different angles rather than just drawing you know one eye here we go there's an eye and here's the eyebrow and, and going from there i just i not feeling it at all so already i'm having a lot more fun with this it is not looking like a whole lot yet because it's it's just a base sketch but what i'm doing is just roughing in my broad shapes making sure everything's kind of there I give them an ear another video that i'll have to do at some point uh how to draw ears quickly and easily and getting used to how the forms interlock with each other. But for now, there's my ear. Give him a big crazy grin, kind of like with Joker. Maybe I'll give him a little drool. And I know I'm going to end up drawing some lanky, sparse kind of hair. It'll just be kind of fun. All right, so from here, I've got enough that I'm going to use my kneaded eraser, lighten this down. So I can see what I'm doing. Hopefully it shows up. I think I, I can still see it on the screen as I look up. Um, so I can see what I'm doing, but it doesn't interfere with the, the final drawing. And the next stage that I always go to every single drawing is my pencil. 
And I like to draw, I always call it just basically a cartoon. I don't really know if there's a better, I'm sure there's probably a much better term for it. But what I want to do here is get everything drawn in tightly, but without any kind of line weight, just to define all my shapes. And then I can hang my shadow and line weights and, and ultimately rendering on top of this. And it has a good structural base to work from rather than trying to get all that stuff in before I really have enough to give it a framework. I think that that drawing in a, a loose um, gestural drawing and then going in and, and getting things uh, defined like this is what makes a difference between a drawing that looks like it structurally is sound and something that, you know, might have uh, some cool details to it and be kind of... Um, interesting to look at in some ways, but just doesn't really structurally hold together. Draw on some wrinkles for his nose. I find the best way that I've, I've had to learn how to draw all the, the wrinkles and everything around the nose and, and the brow is a mixture of looking in the mirror and just, you know, grimacing and frowning. But also, uh, there's some great artists that do it so well, and uh, uh, learning from from how some of the best do it, and and using uh, some of the detail that they've come up with and the way that they define it, um, it's really truthfully how I learned. I think the the best artist at drawing this sort of thing um, that I've ever seen is uh, Glenn Fabry. He does unbelievable facial folds and and little details and uh, I've stolen from him that kind of thing many times over the years. And I think as long as you're drawing your own drawing, uh, picking up details and, and things from other artists, it's the fastest way to grow. It's the, the best way to improve your work uh, effectively because what you're doing is you're taking um, the best things that other artists do and you're incorporating it in your own work and um, there are so many years of of history of, of great artists uh taking um, in life there are no lines and i'm um, really in life there are no paint colors and it's all an interpretation everything with art is an interpretation of life so uh or an imagination i mean this is much more imaginative than just a straight interpretation but in order to interpret it the most effectively it seems crazy to me to not take advantage of, of so many years of of great innovations from from different artists. I want his teeth to be kind of crooked and messed up. So maybe I'll go a little longer with this one. Angle that one in. Pop that one out a little bit. Just have some fun with it. Give him a little tooth here. At this point now, he's got too many teeth there. I don't even care not supposed to look real it's just supposed to be fun bottom teeth in i like to define shapes of my teeth with uh, triangles connecting like this and then it gives me a place to actually put the teeth so they angle in also the the i don't know that this is necessarily correct or, or what but I like it when the top teeth angle in toward the center and the bottom teeth do the same the other way. It just seems to have a more pleasing look. And his bottom teeth aren't really all that raggly. I'm going to have to play with that a little bit. Drop his lip down here. I think I've really defined that fold very well. I have a real tendency nowadays to just draw directly with ink. I'll draw my basic outline the way that I, I did to start, and then I go right in with ink. And when I have a problem like that, uh, I just use whiteout. I actually had an artist, Mark Silvestri, actually showed me uh, some pens that he had found that are incredible for whiteout. Actually. So there are a range of these. This is a Oscar Uni. Uh, anyway, there are three different sizes that I found. I've 
found these actually in a pack, so I got all three sizes at once. This is a thicker one, and there's a thinner one, and then there's one that has a, a real point to it. You shake them, it's got a little ball in there, and uh, the great thing about them is that you can ink on top of them with any kind of ink and it doesn't pick it back up, as opposed to some of the other types that I've found. Uh, trying to ink on top of them, it picks up the white out, and I really can only effectively ink on them with a brush. And uh, I'm terrible with a brush, so it's not really the best solution for me. That year sucks. The reason I say that, it's very normal. I wanted to do something a little crazy, and I, I think because I'm talking, I'm kind of forgetting what I'm doing. There we go. Flare it out just a little bit more. Maybe I'll take a chunk out of it too. Been through some times. These lines from the eyes are going to radiate upward over the brow and then downward over the cheek. But they all kind of come from this point. It's almost like folds in clothing. And it really should be because they are folds. They're just folds in your skin. Give him a big muscular neck. I want him to look like somebody you really wouldn't want to run into. And I'm also going to bring down the size of his skull. And you can see how far I've come from my initial uh, framework. And I do that a lot, but... I think I have a few tendencies. When I draw backgrounds, I really like having a perspective grid. Even if I'm not really using it, it just gives me a place to kind of start and eliminate a blank page and give me a place to kind of visualize. So I do the same thing with my underdrawing, even if it's not something that I ultimately really use. And it's probably a little confusing to watch and think, you know, how did I start with that and end up with something totally different? And what was the point? Well. I don't know if there's really a, a good answer for that other than that. Uh, it's just the way that I feel comfortable working. And uh, I want to give him a really craggy neck to a lot of folds and detail. And, and because he's a villain, I don't have to keep this really clean and nice looking and heroic. I can just be grungy and messy and ugly with it. Why? Characters like this are so much fun. So I'm going to start sketching in some of his hair. And for the hair, it's best to think of it in terms of an overall shape. Um, and then worry about more of the individual hairs from there. And and you really don't think in terms of individual hairs as much as it's it's like a series of interconnecting flowing lines. And I really think the only way to really get comfortable with it that I know is to just look at artists that do it really well and, and copy it until you're comfortable with it yourself. Like so many things that I learned how to do, I learned in a studio with other artists and we would just pick up from each other. And if it really worked visually, then it was good and it was right. And if it didn't work visually, it was not right. And I really think that the, the point of art, the kind of art that I do, and really I, I think the point of any kind of art is for it to be uh, entertaining and visually pleasing to look at. And I think that's more important by far than any kind of real accuracy anatomically. Now, if I'm looking at this on top of his head, I wanted it to be small. I think I got a little carried away. It actually looks misproportioned. And I think because I'm recording this, and it's just been so long since I've done something like this, uh, this is going to be a bit of a mess. Hopefully I'll be able to get it all worked out before we're finished, but you're going to watch me struggle with this. And hopefully that won't continue as I do more of these videos and I get a little more comfortable again. It's just been so long.
All right. So now what I have here is is my the camera a little bit so I can uh, my base drawing. I think he's looking a little off here. Now uh, it's funny. I, I I tend to pick up my page and look at it actually just in the light to see it in reverse. Uh, and that is pretty effective. But as I'm doing this, I can see what I'm doing on a screen. And that's pretty much just as effective. It's a, it's a real different view on this. So I'm looking up and I'm going, oh no, it's looking off. Fixing as I go. All right. So I've got it basically defined but as close as it needs to be. Now from here, I'm gonna start refining my lines. It's a bit of a mess right now still, it's all right. I like being quicker and more gestural even at this stage, just because I think if I really slow down and try and make every line perfect, I end up losing um, a lot of uh, bounce and, and dynamism in the, the picture. His pupils. And, uh, I'm going to I'm going to give this two light sources. Basically, I'm going to have my main light source that's going to come down from up here and then just a little kicker light uh draw proper arrow coming from here. And so with lighting, it's, it's actually a very simple thing. Everything and I'm going to do this right here. If I draw a sphere and the lights coming from here, then this portion here where the light is hitting is going to be light, obviously, and the portion where the light is is not hitting is going to be dark. And it's it's actually so simple when you think about it like this. It's, it's a very easy thing. Where it gets complex for people is when you have multiple shapes together. And you light it. I'm going to make this dark here and this dark here dark over here this will be dark here but they also cast shadow onto each other so this will cast down to here pass this one here and all that has to fit together into a cohesive whole bearing in mind that you're not going to put any light or any shadow where the light is or in any light where the shadow is and it's very simple, but it's also very easy to break if you're really not thinking about it. Okay, so I'm going to light his nose. I don't want it to just be a, a simple... Uh, broad shadow shape. I want to give it a little bit of grunge and detail. I find uh, something I really like to do. If I draw a, like a bit of a curvy line, I know where my light's coming from. So where it's angling away from the light the most, I just give it a little line weight and that makes it look like it's kind of lit. And I also find uh, when I'm drawing, when I first start lighting and I first start putting in my detail, it can really look disjointed to me and be a little off-putting until I start to get more of it in and it, it starts to coalesce into something that makes sense. And it's the same with rendering. Uh, a few render lines on something that has no rendering at all can be um, a little just it looks wrong and it looks like it, it's not working and you kind of have to go with it a bit or to see how it's all together for you I'm just 
drawing this one. In the other eye, I'm really going to explain exactly how I'm putting those shapes in and why I'm putting them in the way they, they're going. I realize as I'm doing this, I'm not, I'm not saying. And it was actually an important part for me to want to do this. Uh, this drawing is to explain some of that stuff. But for now, let me just get this blocked in. This is an overall shape that's similar to this, facing away from the light. The light's going to be here. The shadow's going to be here, and I've got another light coming the other side. So just making sure I get that defined. Shadow for his jowl. I'm going to give him a cash shadow from his nose. Down over his lip here. Cash shadow from the upper lip over the lower lip. He should be pretty pooled in shadow in under his eyebrow and a lot of this a lot of times what i'll do too is i'll start defining shadows where i feel really comfortable okay it's going to be good in shadow there i'll put something in and it's not even necessarily my final shape i'll add to it or even take away from it uh, now this shape under his eye comes away from the light here and it comes toward the light here and it is kind of it rounds just like his nose so i'm going to go nice and dark here away from the light you can see i'm just adding that to the shadow that was already there this is now i don't know any of the names of anything on a body it's just never really been necessary uh for drawing unfortunately it is probably a little more necessary for explaining but inside your eye you've got that little inner piece right here so I'm just leaving that open for now I might end up closing it in but for now it's there and I want to give him a lot of wrinkles and shadows underneath his his eye uh, on his lower eyelid so I'm going to draw a line across and then draw some wrinkles intersecting with it and let them come out the other side and it looks like nice intersecting wrinkles and it's just using connecting shadows get that across and if you just draw little blocky shadow shapes that can start looking like they're not really defining anything it's it's important to think of the overall wrinkle like this line here and then connect up into it and through it and it's to me looking like very similarly sized shapes so i'm going to make this quite a bit thicker that's something i think you get a feel for as you go along but when it's not working and it's looking like you've just got something that's looking really uniform and, and maybe a little static knowing how to diagnose that is very very important and so making this much thicker because it's further away so it would cast a little more shadow be a little further further from the light not only gets that across but it also breaks up just how uniform some of those lines were now this over his eye here his upper lid i'm going to put a nice thick shadow here because there's a ridge there and it's also really coming away from the light so get that defined in there my pencil I give him a shadow under crease from his nose and this I want to have quite a bit of shadow in here start slapping that in also I think it's it's important uh, when it's a drawing like this or really any kind of drawing for me I don't like to just use curves or you know I, I've actually gone through periods where I've tried to not use curves at all but I find that can look a little bit stiff or a little rigid if might not be the rest the best word it starts to look not organic i think is what i'm trying to say 
Um, but I, I like to use, instead of just a curved line, I think it's a lot more fun to draw a line, maybe put a little hook in it, give it a little bit of shape, and it just makes it look much more dynamic and fast and a little harder. And I do that a lot. So here I've got a hard shape coming out of there, like a hard point instead of just a curved line. And it's much more interesting to look at. And there's really probably no, and I'm doing it here too. I, I just, I've gotten so comfortable just how I draw that I can't help it. And I don't really think about it. And I, actually a, a real bonus for me, I'm gonna shadow here pretty heavily. Get that kind of working. Um, a real bonus for me of doing videos like this is it actually makes me think about what I'm doing. And it's been, again, it's been a while since I've done this, so pretty rusty. I'm, I've gotten into a habit of just working and really not overly thinking the decisions that I'm making. I've got a, a line radiating out here. I don't want to just go with a big curved line, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a shape here, maybe a little bit more here. Still want to continue out the shadow here. And this is where, again, I, I really, I don't worry about getting that whole shadow shape in all at once. I'm worried about getting it in in the specific spot that I'm thinking about at the time, and then I can extend it and, and keep moving. And I think I'm gonna make these dark. And the reason I'm gonna do this instead of opening them up is his upper lip would be casting a bit of a heavier shadow. I don't shadow teeth. I never do. I've tried. It always seems to just end up bogging down a picture and I find there I love a lot of detail and a lot of rendering and making a big mess of things but there are places where it can be really effective and there are places where it can't and uh learning that unfortunately is it's a mixture of looking at artists and and seeing the decisions that they've made and emulating that and then also just making the mistake and, and rendering out an area or shadowing an area that that ends up looking wrong and if it does well if it looks wrong as far as I'm concerned it's it's wrong I find tangents in art are are very much like that I mean there are tangents all over in life so it's it's not inaccurate to have a tangent but art really isn't just an accurate representation of life it's not supposed to be even art that is intended to be as accurate an interpretation as possible it's always a mistake to have a tangent And if you're not familiar, a tangent is just when you have one shape. Let's say I've got to draw an arm here. There we go, there's an arm. And then I'm gonna draw another person and he's gonna be standing right here and his arm is right here. And they look like they're attached to each other. And that can absolutely happen in life. People are standing one right beside each other and they touch like that, but in artwork you can see just, uh, I mean, hopefully that's actually making some kind of actual sense. There's one guy's head and the other guy's head. You can see it just looks, it looks um, very awkward. Whereas if I was to erase this guy here, put him behind the other guy. Now it, it looks like they, they make sense together. So let's get rid of that. Start defining in. is brow, I guess. Wrinkles between his eyes. I'm gonna draw right through his hair because I can just erase that out after. I even do that with ink and I'll just use white out if I start getting overly bogged down trying to work around things that are 
in the way. I find it's easier to just draw through and then um, erase out afterwards. Raw wrinkles up in here. Make sure I know I've got a shadow here. That's well and way up. You know what? I think I'll actually thicken up the shadow all the way through here. Certainly not necessary, and it, this really pushes this portion of his head into more of a, a ball shape downward, but I like how it looks. So I want this to look as you know spooky and mean as possible. This is not something I would do with uh, a character that's supposed to look. little bit now I'm going to start defining more of these I've got these just drawn in as simple lines but I'm going to use these as my guide and start drawing some wrinkles on top of them Having that guide and having something that overall has a flow and that works and fits together means that you won't end up with just a bunch of odd shapes on the page that don't actually define anything. Really want to make sure like this is a raised ridge here and I'm defining it as opposed to just drawing in lines. Now, ultimately, because all we're really doing when we're doing art like this is defining it and just drawing in lines. It can be a bit of a challenge to um, make sure that they interpret properly and don't just read that way. As I'm drawing right now, I hate this whole jaw and I'm fixing it. So here we go. This is why it's nice to draw in. One of the reasons I really like to draw in uh, something very light, even when I've defined in my shapes, I like to keep it light and just um, line drawn as opposed to putting this detail in and then realizing you know what i don't like the shape and having to break out a, a heavier eraser and make a big mess uh, if i've got it really lightly defined like that pretty easy for me to fix it I'm bring this jaw back i think that looks a little big i'm gonna make it smaller All right, having to bring out the other eraser anyway. There we go. I feel like I'm always making excuses when I say this, and I am making excuses, but drawing things that look bad is only bad if you leave it. So if you willing to pick up the eraser and fix it and keep working with it until it's something you're a little more happy with and that, that looks good. Nobody else needs to see the mistake except for people to watch the video.
I should have under his lip here. I want to make sure. Clean this up a bit. Leave that rim light in there. Make sure it's still defined. And you can see how, again, I, if I'm going to put a little more drool over here, I draw the line for it, and then I know where my light's coming from. I can shadow it out, and it makes it look. I'll draw a circle here, and if I put a shadow there, it's terrible, but you get the point. And his lips is going to need have the overall shadow pattern defined in it, too. Give him some wrinkles. And you'll notice I'm jumping around quite a bit. I think the reason for that is I want the whole picture to work together and to look good as a whole. And if uh, if I just concentrate on one area and bring it up to a total finish, um, it might not actually work with the rest of the picture. So uh, I jump around, you know, and a lot of that's really unconscious, but it's it's making the whole picture have a consistent lighting and feel. But it's important when you do that, and it's vitally important, that you never lose sight of where your light is, where your overall shadow pattern is. And also, uh, I can use the same light source and only put in a tiny little bit of lighting, just a little bit of shadow, or I can go really, really heavily shadowed with it so there's barely any light at all. And that's uh, a decision you have to make with your overall lighting pattern and you have to be consistent with. Because if I have a really thick shadow on his nose and then almost no shadow on his chin or other areas, it's not going to hold together. Even though the lighting is technically correct in the sense that it's coming from the right direction, it's still going to look bad. And that's something I see quite a bit, actually. Uh, drawing where, yeah, it's, it's lit from the right way. It's not the lighting that's wrong. But what is wrong is it's not consistently lit. One thing is heavily, heavily shadowed. The other thing is almost not shadowed at all. And, and so it, it just ends up looking like parts of different pictures. And you can see that's why I'm I'm really kind of building my shadow. It, I, I don't know if looking at a picture like this finished, it looks like I know where everything goes as I go. And I really don't. I have, and depending on what I draw, if I draw something that I've drawn a million times the same way, then I probably don't run into these kinds of issues. But when I'm drawing something that's a little bit more creative and I'm just having a little more fun with it, it's a real push and pull. So I don't worry about getting that whole shadow in there. I worry about getting it in and then looking at the overall picture and making sure that it's consistent with what I'm doing with everything else. I'm sure that makes sense. This is almost like rendering a little bit, so it's almost cheating because this is going ahead of stage, but it's kind of not. I'm still just drawing wrinkles. I'm just. But I, I, have, I have to say, I, I really like uh, playing with uh, rendering for me is keep going off my picture and, and going on tangents. But rendering is a, it's a clean series of lines that define out ideally from a shadow and it, it brings a, an object from dark into light. It's like a transition. And obviously, this is not something you would ever see in real life. But you can actually get a rendering type of an effect with something like this, where it's wrinkles, but I'm putting them in almost like rendering. Now I actually am rendering. Stop. I'm stopping. All right. And this is actually a similar kind of a thing. It's fading up from a dark to a light, and it's just a different texture. So it's like rendering by another means. I have a feeling this video is going to be way too long for what it, ideally I should be doing, you know, 10 minutes or, or something like that.
and I will get this whole thing kind of sorted out in terms of like format and you know the kind of content that I want to put on here and but um truthfully for right now I just wanted to get something up and just have some fun with something so if this is a two hour video it's going to be a two hour video we'll get all that stuff worked out later you'll have to bear with me I'm not a prof well I'm a professional artist I'm not a professional prof uh, presenter at all and if you're watching this I just put up a uh um an intro video to my channel earlier today and uh I know it's bad you don't have to tell me <laughs> and that took so many takes every single sentence is a, I had to stop the camera and start again I just this is not my strong suit but I do really enjoy teaching so I'm doing it I really miss it when I'm I'm not doing it I want to actually I've got this shadow defined under his eye here for his lower eyelid I actually want to cast shadow it really darken up that area I think that looks a little better all right moving on over here And I'm really trying to think in terms of going from dark to light with all this stuff too. I don't want to go really heavy with any shapes up in here because that's really more where my light is. So if I'm going to go heavy with shapes or heavier with well shapes, uh, it's going to be much more tilted to where the light is not hitting as strongly or at all. I'm going to get some shadow into his ear just so I can start to connect this up together as a whole area it's getting a little floaty and a little nebulous for me I'm not seeing what I'm doing so and that's actually really that's why I moved on to the ear right now instead of continuing with this because I felt like I needed the ear just as a benchmark that's the right word just to help me visualize what I'm trying to do with the other portion and you can see uh, this is now going to connect with the lines I'm doing on his face, which is why I needed to get this kind of defined. And, you know, I'm thinking as much, if anything else, I am going to do quicker videos where it's a little more concise and maybe a little bit more planned. But I actually really enjoy doing this kind of video where I'm 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 not going in with a plan and I'm just talking about exactly what I'm thinking while I'm drawing and the kind of decisions that I'm making. And uh, I think that that kind of has its own value. So um yeah. All right. I think this should act out just a little bit further here. Getting a little bit. I've gotten so used to working with ink. I generally, I when I'm lighting something with pencil, uh, and I've gotten so used to this over the years, I'll start on the left hand side and move over to the right so I don't end up with a smudgy mess. And uh, I can see already that I'm I'm not doing that right now. I'm, I started more over here and it's because I've, I actually have started, I don't really light with a, or a shadow with a pencil anymore. I just do it with a big brush. I'm gonna do some videos with that too. I just slap it all in there and go for it. And uh, it's pretty rare, I, I find, you know, Wally Wood's famous rule is when in doubt, black it out. And uh, I love that rule because it's pretty hard as long as you're working with your lighting and, and thinking in terms of, of where the broad shadows go. It's hard to mess up too badly by throwing in some shadow and just 
just going for it instead of overthinking it too much. So I just go in with a big brush and uh, if I really run into trouble, then I've got my bigger whiteout pen. That happens, but really not that often. Not as much as, not much as much as I would have thought when I just penciled all the time and I would erase a lot. I find uh, when I'm inking a lot of times, I'll put it down and then that's what it is. And I just need to find a way to work with it. And I do one way or another. I also, I love being able to, you know, I'm going to go in now that I've kind of got the stuff figured. I'm going to go in and erase out for some hair here. And I'm not worried about getting it all nice and clean with the eraser because I'll just go back in and fix it. Let's do that right now. And the advantage of working with a pencil, I can see some of the lines kind of still cutting through there and it's not perfect, but that's all right because it's pencil and a good inker. They know how to figure that stuff out. Ash some shadow into his hair too. One thing I, I really like with a, a core shadow type of a lighting. Oh, you know what? Here. There we go. Realize my camera's way off kilter. Um is you get that that rim of light and so then putting another dark behind it pops it whenever you take a, a light and put a dark behind it and then another light behind that you uh you push things back in space really effectively it's there's linear perspective and there's visual perspective uh, there's a word for it i don't know what it is but i do know that if you back lights and darks it really separates well and it looks like a push back in space so i use that a lot this is where working with a brush and ink is nice because i can just put down a nice big area very quickly instead of slowly scribbling in with a pencil and um i know that there are thicker and heavier pencils that i could use that would make this quicker dropping in big shadows, but I don't like using them because for me, I find if I use them, I just end up getting a smudgy mess. I'm doing this a little bit. Let's, uh, you know what, I'll just stop working down there. I'm butting up against the base of my camera, so. I actually put little marks on the page before I started so I would know how far down to go. And I can see my mark, like, you know, halfway up from where I ultimately went. What's really important to me in doing these shapes here is uh, making sure that I'm not drawing shape after shape after shape that's exactly the same kind of shape and size and placement. I want to have a broader shape here. And then connected to a much smaller and maybe thinner shape here and then I'll put another shape here that's maybe halfway now I don't remember who told me this somebody told me and this was actually just recently so it was like a, a big revelation for me and it's kind of a small thing but it makes a big difference and that is if you are drawing like debris there's like a you know a rock here and a rock here and a rock here you can see how it looks really static because they're all the same size the trick and apparently it visually works and I've tried it, I can confirm, is you draw one this size and if you draw a smaller one and then a small one and you keep going in threes. So you draw something bigger, a smaller shape and then a smaller one. And obviously don't, don't, uh, I'll draw a nice big one here. Just to break it up, I'm totally, <laughs> I'm not showing this well. But basically, if you work in threes, a bigger shape, a smaller shape, and then a really uh, small shape, and you you keep going back and forth, big shape, small shape, smaller, and then you smaller, and you go over the whole thing, it'll actually end up looking surprisingly random. It works. Even though that little demonstration didn't. Take my word for it. It really does work.
boot placement in his hair. Figuring out kind of where my part is. I, um, when I started inking more regularly a couple years ago, I was using a, a crow quill and a, a brush, and I stopped using a crow quill. They work incredibly well. I mean, for what they do, they work better than anything else, I think. But what they don't do is allow you to scribble back and forth with your line. If you go back on your line, you'll end up with a blotch of ink all over the page. And so only being able to go one way, um, I think if, if I was more of a trained inker, that'd be all right. But uh, being a penciler for so long, and I really like to be able to sketch and be a little bit more spontaneous with the line, I just found that wasn't working for me. So I use um, uh, like micron type pens for, for all that stuff. And then uh, it's much more like drawing with a pencil. Now, now that I have more of this defined, I'm actually going back to the nose, which I started, you know, first, and I can kind of see more where I've got my lighting and I can get that working more for me. If I try to do this all at once, maybe if I could visualize better, I would have been able to do it. But for me, I just find this works. I want to make the whole picture work as a whole. That's what I'm doing now. I'm going in and kind of finishing out the, the detail on his nose. All right raced out here with the hair Get that in here I cast a shadow from I'm actually I don't do this a huge amount but turn the pencil sideways you get a whole lot more lead out of it just for the purposes of not being here all day Get that thrown in there I'm gonna give him a vein coming out of his neck Draw a shadow from neck muscle. This isn't even showing up on video. I'll stop. All right. And since I've got this shape, this shape here is coming over this one. So I draw in the shadow for that and then just leave it open. And it's like negative space drawing. I'll do it here too. Drawing in the other side of the shape and I'll just break it up here make his neck even thicker make sure the back of his head actually supports it all right now similar kinds of folds and raggles that I was doing around his eyes and they if I draw a line and draw another one connected to it I make sure to connect them here and thicken it up in here just a little bit and then I can draw another one here, connect it there. Connect it there. Just those little connections, actually. And let me erase this out. Get a little there. Make sure that it interrupts the profile a little bit. And I'm actually kind of going off the plot a little bit here because I don't have any of this defined in my underdrawing. So I'm kind of making it up and that can be a real mistake. Uh, it's very easy to start getting something that like this muscle here, I don't feel like it's connecting to his, his ear. This long muscle in the neck actually connects right up under the ear. And if it's not, then it's just not drawn in properly. So let me, let me just get that. Or properly defined. Draw some of that muscle shape in through my wrinkles. This is really not an anatomy class at all, if, if, as much as this is a class of any kind. Um, but I will do that in the future and go into the muscles of the neck and how they connect. Uh, 
and I'm sure it'll be a learning experience for me too because it's been so many years. Um, you, as you go along, it's it's very easy to end up getting a bit of a shorthand and and also just avoiding the things that you're not as comfortable with. And, uh, I know that I've done that. I've actually really been trying to work on my backs and my feet and some things that I've never. When I started drawing professionally, I didn't really have worked out and. Uh, as much as I, I learned so much at Top Cow and it was such a great learning environment, what it wasn't was a foundational um, uh, drawing class. So if you didn't know how to draw a good back, nobody's going to say, you know, do this and do this and do this. It was, you know, it was something that is just too easy just to avoid. So, you know, if I was uncomfortable drawing a back, I could just use a cape or use a, you know, a different angle. Now that I have this whole area kind of figured in, I'm just going to go ahead and start getting this whole thing a little bit more realized. I want to thicken up the broader shape so it's heavier with the overall shadow. I do feel like I've kind of gotten a little bit too um, similarly sized and shaped with all of those shapes. Some of this up. If I can't break that up a little bit more and have it not be quite so um, uniform. And I, I think it's it's an important skill to look at your art and say, okay, this, this area is just not looking right and just, uh, you know, work with it. Don't just leave it. to define its eyes a little bit. I'm going to give him pretty good veins in his eyes. And in a second, I'm going to show you a trick that I didn't so much learn this from anybody, but I saw artwork actually by Simon Bisley where he did this and I thought it looked great, and so I stole it. And by the way, I draw my pupils in incredibly small, just like with a little point, because that way, if it's not really working and I don't like the placement, it's easy for me to just draw from the point there or out this way and get it centered properly. Whereas if I draw in the whole pupil all at once, I'm a little stuck with it. I want to erase it. So what I'm going to do now is draw the inner side of that eye, not all the way up to the lid, and uh, kind of define it with some of these veins in it. it I'm sure this is completely ridiculous and it wouldn't work that way, but I love how it looks. So it works that way for me. And I'm going to still keep it pretty small. And I'm not just drawing straight lines into the pupil and breaking them up and giving them a little bit of bounce and shape. Keeps things a little more interesting and organic looking. All right, let's do the other eye. Camera, I'm going to have to tape this down, I think, at some point because it keeps shifting. Okay, let's get this one here. I'm going to do the same thing on this eye. You got something that you think works, you might exploit it into the ground. Be 
even going a little bit more pronounced on the side because it's further away from the light. So I figure I can get away with it. All right. Shadow. Because this one's more directly up under the brow, I'm shadowing from the brow heavily. It's a matter of just, you know, adjustments as you go along, looking at what you think is working and what's not working and just making some adjustments. Let's, let's actually start to get into some detail. Teeth. Be really screwed up and dirty and craggy. If I draw a line nice and thin, I can put little bouncy shadowing on the other side of that line it all looks like it's it's like crags inside that shape this actually really works well for buildings too gonna make two teeth out of this one because I really want to round that around and I don't feel like it's rounding. There, I think. Shadows on the intersects in here. I wanted that to look broken. Fix it so it actually looks broken instead of like some weird. To do the same thing here, I'm going to make these smaller. Make them sweaty. All right, I think we're getting pretty close to where I'm going to start rendering. This kind of a character obviously has a lot more shadow, raggy detail than than most, but that's really why I wanted to do it. I just wanted to have some fun with something that's a little nuts. So really, probably rendering is a bit of an overkill. It's not necessary, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, let's shut his hair over here just a bit.
I guess it's all right. A lot of times when I'm drawing, I'll just cover up part of the drawing to see how what I'm looking at works and then see if it works as a whole, you know? So that's all it was there. And uh, I think it's about as good as it's getting, so I'm keeping it. All right. All right, I'm going to start rendering them. So I'm going to start right here. No particular reason, but got to start somewhere. I'm making sure to follow the form, help define the form, and most importantly, not fight the form. So, I've got a shape that overall curves like this, so I'm following it. Even though my light's coming from here, and um, a lot of times that's just a choice. I could have gone the other way too. As a matter of fact, I can just now go the other way and define it that way too. You really want to be a little careful not to get too over. I know I over render everything, so saying that, but oh, I am going to go that way. And I'm going much thicker and shorter with this because I want this to be much more of an abrupt curve over instead of just going with a long line that would really flatten that shape quite a bit, which is what you want for some things, but that's a, a smaller, harder curved shape. So. You really want to think in terms of the shape you're trying to define and what's going to be most effective for defining that. And here again, shorter line because it's a much smaller shape. And then I can go longer with this because this is a much broader shape. Going right through my, going right through my sweat.
so much of this is just having the patience to uh, be consistent with the lines that you're doing. And this is a thing if you're if you're going to render, uh, you can't just render a small portion of it and then just leave the rest. You have to really commit to rendering the whole thing at a consistent level. So it's something you want to consider. You know, if you want to be a renderer heavy artist, it's a lot of work and can't skimp on it and it's it's really only one style you want to just define things with shadow uh, and leave it open with no rendering i think that's it's a great style and i've actually worked that way before quite a bit more wasn't really using a lot of rendering for quite a while um i just prefer it i i really like it i think a good portion of it comes from just a lack of confidence in art you know you can cover up a lot of sins which a million little lines and you know um and i acknowledge that but uh, i also just really like it so <laughs> i still do it whether i'm confident with the picture or not i have my wife actually tell me all the time shoot if uh i i work upstairs while we're uh watching television she'll say just leave it leave it it's fine you know and then i just keep going and uh yeah it's pretty upset because I killed the picture, but you know, I've been doing this for 27 years now. Is that right? 26 or 27 since 94, I guess. I don't know, whatever a long time. And, uh, I'm not going to change now. I'm going to kill it with rendering. I'm going to kill it with rendering. There's some things I really want to learn to improve and, and be better at. And then there are other things that I just really enjoy and I don't care if it's right. Terrible thing to say when I'm trying to help somebody learn. But there is a point where you have to be true to yourself. You know, you know what you like, you know, the kind of art that you like. And if that's what you want to do, I don't think you're going to be a happy artist just trying to do, you know, what's popular. Now, I'm an image artist, by which I mean, I got into comics during kind of the start of image. I worked at an image studio. Uh, under Mark Silvestri, he was my favorite artist, and I worked there because I was working in a style that that fit with what they were doing, because it's what I loved. So you know, I really didn't think to myself, "Gee, I, I'd like to work at Image, and I'd like to be an Image type of an artist because they're doing really well right now." I did it because that's actually what really drove me to want to draw comics and what got me into this thing. So that's what I do, and I feel like this is looking like a mess. I'm actually going to block that in just dark. I don't like it. It's looking a little busy. Still don't like it. I'm fixing it. Go. Okay. I'm gonna go a lot thicker, cleaner, just with rendering out of here. It was just getting a little small and looking a little busy. Yeah, that looks a little cleaner and more cohesive and it's a big area so I, I don't want to start defining it with a million little tiny lines that don't actually really uh, define the overall big shape When I'm rendering some of this stuff here, I, I don't want to over render too much, but I want that in there. So then I just break up the lines and almost do like a dot, 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 dot. And it gets, it gets that defined without it, it, the breaking up the line. I go break this up here. It just keeps it a little more airy. I, it's a style. I've seen artists that really, they'll do every single line that way. And I think it's a mistake to have any one particular thing that you're doing as like some kind of a rule like this is how it, every little every because you render this way every line has to be rendered exactly that way i think you're better off to you know uh vary it up makes it much more interesting
Okay, so on his lip here, I want to give it a bit of a ridge like this and then the overall shape. So the way that I'm going to define that is I'm going to draw on some thicker, shorter rendering here. And then I'm going to leave a little gap and go thinner above it. And that gap actually looks like a, it's lit. You see what I mean? Looks like it's got a, a bit of a lit line through there. And this is a trick I use all the time. Kind of defining this in a similar way. I've got some shapes here, some ridges, and just not ha having rendering stop there, and then some little short ones here gives it a nice rounded sort of feel. I don't think what I said there makes any sense. Hopefully, you know what I mean. I went much thicker and, and bigger with these lines here because this is a shape that I really wanted to find as, as really popping out. And also I want it to be, it's, um, if you're looking at it kind of, you know, it's, it's curved like this as opposed to being curved like this. So I want to do this instead of doing this. I think that makes sense. All right. And I can even find a little bit on the other side, a little more pop. I think I'd like to really make this look more like a socket in through here. So the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to build up the shadow in here. I don't want to just draw a thick line through there. What I want to do is pull up more shadow and all the wrinkles just in that little area. And then I can render out of them. Sure to stick with what I had there, obliterate it, Same technique I used here, I'm just using right over here to, to find that ridge. And this is obviously completely not necessary. That shadow is enough. I don't really need any of that rendering. I just like it. So I think it gives it a little bit more. Uh, I like to um, draw in a way that I want it to be. I don't want it to look really, really soft but I want it to look organic and like something that you could actually reach out and, and 
grab with your fingers. This isn't the kind of thing you'd want to grab with your fingers, but that's the feel that I want to give things. I, I want it to look like it has some real um, weight, age, and I feel like that kind of rendering adds to that for me. I got a little loose over here and I'm not going to really make it too much tighter because there's a point when we're just having fun here I'm not really even drawing anything here I'm doing much more I have over here broader kind of a shape Just go in here and really define some edges a little bit more. So if you work with a, a great inker, uh, Danny Mickey or Richard Friend or Scott Williams or Jimmy Reyes, who also does YouTube videos. I need to link to his channel. I, I just put up a, a link to um, Robert Marzullo, who's phenomenal. Um, but yeah, Jimmy's inked me on a few things and he really knows how to pick up on, on these kinds of details. So I don't actually have to be that careful in, in making sure that they're defined. but still can be very helpful. I wanted his hair to be very scraggly. I don't think I pulled that off. That's all right. Okay. Let's just lock in that darker. I know I put all those little shapes in there, but to me it's just looking distracting, so. This is gonna be just about it. Let's just go dark here. That's gonna be my, yeah, you know what? He's a clown. paint and we are going to call that finished uh thank you so much for watching this was a long one uh i just kind of went with it i just wanted to get this one going and get the channel kind of started again get some videos under my belt uh i'm going to try and make the next one a little bit more focused a lot more focused hopefully Thank you so much for watching again if you liked please subscribe and you know hit the little bell thing and the works and uh the next one should be up in well i'm going to try and do these weekly so just about that much time all right have a good day